Welcome back to the Neural Network Lecture Series. Uh, so today I am confident that you will learn something new. And while we may make errors along the way, that's simply the cost of learning. On a completely unrelated note, today we are going to be learning about confidence, error, and cost in relation to a neural network. So as we consider uh, how a neural network examines its output and how a neural network actually learns and how it scores itself, we need to understand especially what a cost function is. And to do that, we're going to use two so subcomponents, which is error and confidence. We'll start with error because it's simpler. So in the last video, um, I showed you how a neural network has an output. And there's a, uh, there's a way that it gets that output, but it does have an output. Now in supervised learning, we have a desired output for the network. So let's say our desired output is a one. Let's say we, we have something and we want to classify it as a one. And let's say it gets a 0.7. Let's say it outputs 0.7. Now the way that we are going to figure out the error is we're simply going to subtract these. So we'll subtract, get a 0.3. So that's a decent error. You know, if, if this value was higher, closer to our 1.9, let's say, it would have a 0.1 error. And if it was like a 0.3, it would have a 0.7 error. So the closer the value gets to its desired output, the lower its error is. Now, the question then becomes, why can't we just judge a network with error and nothing else? So this is a question I used to ask for a while, because it seems like that's really all you need. Uh, because if we were going to solve this problem ourselves, this is most likely what we would do. You know, if we get closer to the answer, then we know we're doing something right. Um, but to answer why we actually need this, I'm going to propose a hypothetical for you. So imagine you're taking a multiple choice test, a math test. And you come to a question and you don't know the answer. Of course, this has never happened to me in my life. Um, I always know the answer to everything. But let's just say hypothetically that we don't know the answer. Um, so you're given A, B, C, and D as options. And they're in the value of lowest to highest. If you're like me, you're probably going to choose B or C, values which are in the middle, because they probably have a better chance of, of being right. Um, but you're probably not very confident in your answer. It's just guesswork, after all. So if we want to incentivize making choices that we uh, that are confident in our neural network, we want to avoid playing it safe, and we want to choose answers that are further away from the middle. So confidence solves this problem, and it's exactly what it sounds like. A, uh, a confident neural network is one that is confident in its choices. It makes values that are very close to one or zero in the example that we're using. So if it's a neural network that's in the middle, if it keeps outputting 0 0.5s, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, uh, even if it gets a lot of values right, classification-wise, it's very volatile being right in the middle of two choices. It could go either way. So thus, we want to incentivize extremes. Uh, and we're going to do this uh, through all the way back when we talked about the sigmoid. We're going to use the derivative of the sigmoid. Because if you remember the derivative of the sigmoid, I have it right here. Um, the derivative of the sigmoid is much lower at our extremes and much higher at the middle. So essentially, uh, a higher or lower value, close to 0 or 1 on a sigmoid, is going to be a more confident value. Because you can see this drop off here um, in our curve in terms of the derivative. So these higher values or lower values where the sigmoid flattens out, that's where we have higher confidence. So a lower derivative means a higher confidence. Um, so we're going to use an example of 0.7 because we used it in the other one to calculate the error. We're going to say 0.7 is about, uh, it's pretty much right here. So if we say that's right here, We'll just estimate this as 1.5, let's just say. So if this value is 1.5, and you could also just do that as like drawing a slope right there and getting the slope. If we say that's 1.5, we can go back here. Say 1.5 is our confidence. And 
0.3 is our error. But we want to put these together, and we're going to use multiplication to do this. So, if you want to score your network, get a cost, and this is probably the biggest term, is a cost for your network. We're simply going to multiply the error and the confidence together. So we're going to just do simply 1.5 times 0.3, and we get our final result. So uh, this is going to be 0.45. Very simple. Um, 0.45 is going to be our cost uh, for this given value. And in the next video, uh, I'm going to discuss how this cost is used to change our weights over time. As an activity, um, before you go, I want you to uh, create a cost function for the game of horseshoes. So if you don't know about the game of horseshoes, you essentially just have like a little post right here and you throw horseshoes. And depending on how close you are is how many points you get. So in this example, this one would be the closest. And so it would get the most points. So um, using what you know about the rules of that game though, you're gonna create a cost function if you were playing horseshoes, like in the dark, let's say. So uh, using what you know about the rules of that game in a sigmoid mapping to determine how confident you are in your throw, uh, output a total cost for any given throw, given the position of the horseshoe um, and the position of the post. So in the next video, we're going to talk about learning, uh, but we're also going to code an entire neural network from scratch using the activities that we've been doing and the things that we've been learning. So I hope you're very excited to start the last lecture in the lecture series and have this all come together. So I will see you then.